Hi everybody, this is Keith with Total Seal Piston Rings, here to bring you another tech tip. One of the things that we deal with every day in the many, many phone calls we get is talking about blow-by. The possible causes, things that can you know, lead to blow-by. A couple of the things that we've talked about and gone into pretty good depth so far, cylinder finish. I hate to say that we've talked it into the ground because we haven't. There's a lot to talk about there. Proper break-in procedures we've talked about. There's quite a few videos out there that we've put together. The need to use a proper break-in oil, essential for good ring seating today. Piston design, cylinder lengths, worn out grooves, but that's not what we're talking about today. Today we're gonna to touch on board geometry. Getting that truly good straight round board, how critical it is, and a little bit of diagnosis that you can do yourself. My cohort in crime, Lake Speed, this past weekend did a technical uh, seminar out of state, and a particular gentleman brought a engine block to us to look at, having a horrible ring problem. He's had multiple sets of rings through it, none of them ours, but all at the same point, all decent parts. And he's looking at the ring, looking at the ring, looking at the ring. And we both honed in on it almost immediately looking at that cylinder. So getting that good, truly straight round bore is a product of the honing process. But it's also a process of trying to mimic everything we can, whether that be torque plates, temperature. There's many, many different things that are involved in trying to create that truly straight round bore. And in no tougher environment than an aluminum block. Aluminum's tough. It really moves around. It's hard to get it truly straight and round. And one of the things that you can do is one, to always make sure to work with a good machinist, a good machine shop. Multiple stone honing heads are literally a godsend when it comes to getting good board geometry. You know, like everything, we started off with two stones, then we went to four, six, there's eights, there's tens, there's twelves. Uh, there is a diminishing point of return. Uh, the six stone head is outstanding, but that's something you can talk with your honing guy uh, or gal for that matter. But the more stones in the head, the better. The easier it is to get truly good straight round bores. One of the problems that we fight with though is as a machinist and as a shop, the only true piece of equipment that'll measure that bore geometry is known as an incometer. Some refer to it as a pad incometer. They're very expensive, six figures. Most shops don't have one. Most of us have the dial bore gauge. The good or the bad of the dial bore gauge, it's a handy tool. There's lots of them out there, but with only two points of reference, we can't measure a circle. We can't say that it's truly straight and round. We can only measure dimension across the board. But if we do it in a proper manner, what I'll call map the cylinder, it can tell us a lot about what's going on. And we'll kind of touch on that here real quick. So one of the things that we want to look at, I've kind of made a couple of little drawings right here. What we ran into with this gentleman's block over the weekend, we looked at it immediately and saw the problem. He brought them, the rings didn't look bad. What I saw, and even though they did all the right things, they did the right hone, they did everything they could, they used torque plates. But as soon as I look at that cylinder, and man, is this a horrible drawing, but hopefully you'll understand. Top of the deck, head bolt holes, water jackets. You can see the dark shadows in that cylinder. These are the streaks that line up with the head bolt holes. These again are the dark areas up around the top inch of the block where once the cylinder head went on, it came up to temperature, it's all torqued down. These areas, the rings are not touching. And in his particular case, not touching by a long way. Uh, he actually had videos of it. We saw this thing look like old 97 coming down the track. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen that much coming out of anything before. But it's simply because the bores are not truly straight and round. So what I suggested him to do is they're gonna re-ring it, they're gonna hone it again. But one of the things that he needs to do is map the cylinder. They're gonna put that torque plate on and not just check a couple points. Make yourself a diagram, make yourself a map. Check it, 10 o'clock, get that dimension. Check it at one o'clock, get that dimension. Three o'clock, get that dimension. And you wanna record that dimension. And you wanna replicate and do this over again with the torque plate installed, then remove the torque plate, install the cylinder head, flip the block over, come in from the bottom, again, back to that handy dandy dial bore gauge, wash, rinse, repeat, and see if your torque plate and your cylinder head are giving you the same results. I can just say this, I've never seen it happen, not once. So we really need to kind of dial in on what the torque plate is doing versus the cylinder head, especially on an aluminum block. Once I think they get that sorted out, this problem is going to go away, and his ring issue, which is not a ring issue, it's actually a block issue, he's got areas in the cylinder that the rings are not touching, 
his blow-by issue is going to go away. So when you see these shadows in the cylinders, that's an immediate sign that we've got an area that is not contacting. The ring is not touching the board. And to expand on that, again, our handy-dandy profilometer. We can come in, look at the value known as the RPK, the peak roughness on the cylinder. We can come in, we can go down to the bottom of the cylinder, we can measure that surface roughness, see what it was in the unrun part of the cylinder, what it was brand new. We can then come back up into the cylinder, run the run parts of the cylinder. Even with just a few minutes of running, we're going to see that RPK number drop down. It tells us that there's been some ring to cylinder contact and it's brought that RPK number down. In this particular case, we can come up into these shadowed areas and we'll look at that RPK number. And we can see that that RPK number has not come down as it has in the rest of the bore, telling me straight out, we're not having ring to cylinder contact. Hence, we don't have good board geometry. We're doing everything we can to get it there, but in this particular case, it's that far off, even though, again, they thought they were doing the right thing. But looking at that cylinder tells me something a little bit different. So stay tuned. We're gonna go out in the shop. We're gonna do a light tight check, show you how we do it, and show you how you can do it in your engine not as accurately as we do, but pretty darn close. So again, stay tuned for the next episode. <laughs>